Tell me. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Uh, today, my talk is going to be on org mode and org room for scholars and researchers. Leo has talked about like the overall picture of org room and org uh, bib tech. Org room bib tech. I will be talking more about the research process itself using these tools. All right. So just to introduce that the research process is really messy. Um, you're always working in like piecemeal tasks and um, things move around all the time. And so there needs to be a system where you can organize all these tasks, all these ideas in a way that is flexible and effective. So my motivation is that research is hard and writing about it is even more difficult. And my goal is to add some structure to this whole madness. So here's a list of some of the stuff that I've been using since I first learned about Emacs in 2019 um, and what I've what I've found useful um, during my re uh, like um, within my research process. All right. So I've organized org mode for researchers and scholars within the writing process into three modules. First, there's like the planning aspect of it. Then you've got the writing and the reference management, which I will join together by looking at the example of doing your literature review. All right. So when we're talking about planning, we're talking about either task management or time management. With task management, you've got org modes to do's and tags and categories. These are really powerful tools that you could use um, in your org files to just um, uh, like organize your tasks and um, your appointments. So there are different types of to do's that you can either set globally in your init file or they can be file buffer specific. So that means based on context, based on the type of manuscript you're working on, whether it's like a literate programming report or your actual thesis slash dissertation. Um, also, these to do's are either created as a subtree, like think of them as headings um, and sections if you use LaTeX um, or inline um, tasks, which are like org inline tasks. I like org inline tasks because like I can add um, to do's between two paragraphs and that way it doesn't show up in the table of contents when I export into PDF or HTML or anything else. All right, so this is an example of um, buffer specific to do's and and this is an example of like a little programming report that I was working on where I was like dealing with data and like analysis and all of that stuff and so I needed um, context specific to do's to use them within this buffer. Um, and that's how I would organize it. And there's also, also another example of um, an org inline task where you could see it in the middle between the two headings. Um, that way it wouldn't show up in the table of contents and it would look like neater within the text when you export it. Oh, but I also added a tag of no export, so it won't show up at all when I export it into like either PDF, which I use all the time. All right, so another useful tool um, for the research and just like general planning is the org capture. Um, when I first started with Emacs, actually it was for org agenda and I went crazy with my capture template. I created a template for everything um, because I was just so excited. But with time, I was using less and less of them, so I kept taking them out. And now this is my simplified um, capture templates that I use, either for a general to do, um, for a regular appointment, a fleeting note, research tasks, because like those are what I focus on, like my bread and butter. And then finally with meetings, which I find sometimes I don't use it as much because I would just like have the org file ready instead of needing to capture, you know, open a capture template. Right, org agenda. Um, that's how I got into Emacs. I needed to um, organize my life and I found Emacs and it's been great ever since. Um, it populates all your to-dos and appointments into a singular view. So the default view, I think it's a weak view. However, I use org super agenda, love this um, package. And I set up my agenda as a daily view with just appointments, deadlines, and a habit tracker. Um, and a side note, you guys, I'm still struggling with organizing the perfect agenda. So it's a process and take it easy. All right. So this is just an overview of my daily agenda. As you can see, they're just like um, appointments that I import from Gmail using org gcal, um, a simple habit tracker of like daily free writing, 
as you can see, <clears throat> there are a lot of times where I'm skipping and the asterisk is the one where I've completed that day. So, you know, it's a process. And then just like regular deadlines. So what happens is that I have other to-dos that I have not scheduled or not added a deadline, but they're just tasks that keep piling up. When I first started with Emacs and Org Agenda, I had everything in there and it got overwhelming. And then I decided, no, I'm not going to even let them show up. So what I would do at the beginning of each week or the night before, um, I would sit down, look at all my to do's that I have not assigned yet to a deadline or a schedule or just a simple timestamp. Um, and I would organize them throughout the week. So here's an example of what I did. So on that Wednesday from my Gmail, I had all these appointments, but one of them is I have a writing group session. And so I looked at my tasks and I thought, okay, then I will just assign, um, like for example, my Emacs slides or the framework diagram into that um, writing session. And all I did was just add an active timestamp. That is all I needed to do. And it went straight into my appointment. Now, if I miss that, it won't show up on the next day. So if you put in a deadline, it will show up as an overdue, but if you have no deadline or schedule, it will not show up in your daily org agenda. So just a star. All right. Another way of accessing your to do's is that if it's um, file specific or file specific buffer specific. And so like when we talked about like whether to have a big ass org file or like tiny files, it all depends, and this isn't the the um, you know the way this depends because if you're working on like a dissertation, um, it's a huge manuscript. You need to like work on that org file all the time. Um, then yes, it, my to do should be in that file specifically because every time if I'm if I'm visiting this org file all the time, I should be able to just look at my um, tasks from uh, within that buffer. And so I use org sidebar to um, keep all these specific uh, to do's within that org file. I find it helpful. OK, now that we're going into the writing and reference management, we'll call it a literature review. Um, and this is something I've built as a schema. I think that it works for now. Um, and it requires one outside pack of outside software, which is Zotero, what I use. It's an open source reference management software. Um, it's great. But the things to keep in mind is that I use two um, plugins that is really needed for when we work with Orgrom BibTech and Orgrom and org mode um, and the Zot file. So better BibTech organizes your reference keys um, in a in a way, like in a fashion that works for you. So for me, all my reference keys are like last author and year. Um, and with Zot file, I um, I let it like rename all the PDF files the same way that I have for my bib uh, my bib keys, which is like last name of author and year. All right. And once you export your entire library as a bib file, then you can work on it within org mode and Emacs using um, the following uh, packages. All right, so with org room bib tech, it creates an org file for each bib entry, and you have the option of like templating and doing other stuff with it. And then finally, there's like this orb PDF scraper. I've used it briefly, but I think the potential with or PDF scraper is if you're going to do a bibliometric study or like a um, systematic literature review. There's something there, but I have to look through it. Anyway, so once you create your, you know, your reference file of reference X and you're writing your notes, you can either go like with going through org mode, you're writing um, your ideas, you're writing your notes, you're assigning tasks. Um, and then there's org transclusion, which I will mention briefly at the end. Um, and ways to extract. If you're going to go through the Orgrom um, things that you're going to use within Orgrom, it's a great way to build your database. You start making the connections and you can visualize your notes and like how these references are linked to each other through the Orgrom server or Orgrom graph. All right. Uh, this is just notes for later. Okay. So this is an example of like an Orgrom file that I have. 
For example, if I'm working on adaptation policy, I have these hyperlinks that are linked to other concepts and ideas, such as either climate security, um, changing global environment, so on and so forth. And the backlinks are other references that talk about this specific concept. So this is really helpful. And then when you visualize it, the picture on the left, which I'm sure looks really small, um, you can see the connections that it's making with other references. So of course, this is just like a buffer network. When you look at the entire um, database network, it's, it's, it's growing. Okay, so going into Orgram BibTeX, <clears throat> so it utilizes a combination of the Orgraph package, Helm BibTeX and BibTeX completion, and it works with Orgram uh, functionalities and other good stuff. This is an example of my Orgram BibTeX file, all right? So I've created um, the template, which I pretty much use what Leo has uh, produced like in his um, tutorial. So I think it's, it's great. It works well for me. Um, and what it does is that it works with your bib file. So if you're in your bib file, you have a sub entry that's called keywords. And usually that's within a journal article. The author would specify these keywords. Um, when it gets imported into Zotero, it, it extracts those keywords and then it gets populated as an org file with Orgram BibTeX. So I always start with the meta information first and then I would write my notes after that. This is an example though for reference of a physical book. So I don't have a PDF file for it. Um, so what I figured out like a new idea for it. So if I'm writing notes on it, I would create a property that says pages. Um, that way it's easier for you when you go back to citing um, certain ideas or something that you have the pages prepared there. It's easier that way. Okay, org noter, which is something I use a lot, especially with journal articles that have PDFs and stuff like that. They're really helpful. If you are gonna, if you've just started using um, Emacs and Orgrom, and you have all these PDFs that have all the annotations and highlighting and the, all that stuff, with Orgnoter, you can just use the Orgnoter create skeleton uh, command, and it will populate all your notes that have already been um, entered within the PDF file if you're using an outside software, and creates them like as a neat org file. I, I highly recommend. Finally, org transclusion. Um, I think this is still in its beta phase, but I've been enjoying it so far. Um, I'm guessing people know what transclusion <laughs> mean, which is sort of like copy pasting text from one org file to another. This is helpful. I, I think I, I peeked at a question that was talking about like, you know, linking um, to other org files. I think org transclusion could really work, okay? It's equivalent to the include function within org mode, um, but I think, so like if you have other files that you know which region that you need in another file, you could use the include, but with um, org transclusion, it's great. I mean, you just have, um, you're just linking one part to the other, sort of like, ref not refiling, but you know, hyperlinking. So this is an example of what org transclusion looks like. Um, so the highlighted problem statement is from another org file. And then what I would do is just like link it to there. And there was like a transclusion command. I wish I made another um, screenshot of it. Um, and so when you invoke org transclusion mode, it turns, um, it prints it out like that. So it's in view mode. Um, and then when you want to edit, it will take you back to that buffer and you can edit the text however you want. All right, so thank you so much. Um, I wanted to leave room for questions, but special thanks to all the folks that work on Orgrom, Orgrom BibTeX, Orgrom Server, Org Transclusion, and of course, Alpha Papo on Org Super Agenda and Org Sidebar. That's how I got into Emacs. Thank you.
All right, and uh, well, thank you. So yeah, this time I'll be the one asking the question and not Amin. So uh, I'm feeling feeling big shoes right now. So you'll have to bear with me, folks. So thank you so much, Noura, for your presentation. That was incredibly interesting. So would you mind if I fed you question from the chat? Yeah, go ahead. OK, so the first one I, I've picked on my end was, did you try using eBib instead of Zotero? And if so, is it better than Zotero in some ways? I No, I have not used eBib. I've only used Mendeley. And then they got bought by Elsevier. And so like I was like, OK, I'm done. I'm going to Zotero. Um, there are a lot of plugins with Zotero that you can play around with. I, so I can't speak for eBib, but definitely Zotero. It's been a good experience so far. Yes, same. Uh, I also uh, I also do research on the side, as I told you, uh, English yeah. major, and yeah, I also do Zotero. Some people have been using uh, a connector between Zotero and Emacs, which has they have had great success with them. But personally, I haven't touched touched it already. So yeah. I mean, so, so far, what do you want to? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. So far, I don't have any problems with Zotero, but maybe if I run into something, I might check out even in the future. Yeah, definitely. I, I think Zotero is a very solid project. And you know, the fact that it's being used by people outside of Emacs also ensures that there's quite a lot of backing behind the software, which is reassuring yeah. when your livelihood depends on your research. Right. And then I think one more thing with Zotero is that you can create groups. So if you're in a collaborative project, you can create a reference, you know, a library just for your group. And I think that could help because like I, I am going to be in a project next semester that requires that. Yeah, definitely. I believe the ability to have folders inside Zotero makes mm -hmm. it incredibly useful to manage your different projects, concurrent projects. Sure. So, so moving on to other questions, do you have any suggestion on what subjects or things should be tags or separate orgram files for cross-linking? Right. Um, so, so far now, like I'm having trouble with like, should I be combining certain concepts together as one? Like this is where the, the thought process, you know, starts coming to fruit is that when you start, you know, combining ideas together, so you won't need a specific tag and another one that are like similar in ideas. I'm not sure if that answers the question, but like so far I've been using the org room you know, the default way, which is like many small um, files and then just linking them to my, like either if I have a report to write or if I have a like, you know, essay to write. I think you're muted. Thank you, and I just, I did two stupid things. The first one was spilling out my water. The second one was speaking without actually turning on my microphone. <laughs> so. Let's just hope that nothing is going to fry in the near vicinity of me right now. But uh, yeah, I, I believe you've answered the question, so don't worry about it. I'm okay. slightly wet right now, which is not a very agreeable feeling, but we'll have to carry on, I suppose. Uh, meta question, is there a place where people are collaborating on research about Emacs? So do you want to try to take this one? Um, I don't know, but I'm definitely interested in the user experience of Emacs. So. If anyone wants to work on that, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> well, you, you do have a, a pretty good candidate in front of you, if I <laughs> should say so myself. Uh, I'm incredibly interested about um, the ability to do research in Emacs and about the ability to um, preach the floss way to academia and to the yeah. academia, especially, because I believe there's really something uh, great to be done. Sorry, I'm just looking at the puddle of water on the side, which is slightly oozing my way, and which is not a very good feeling, really. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I believe I believe some work could be done. And if people are interested in the chat right now, I mean, do get in touch with us. Uh, both Nura and I are on our Slack uh, channel. Yes, I know Slack. The corporate have hive mind that is Slack, but we've decided with Orgrim to use Slack. But mm -hmm. you can find us fairly easily. And uh, if you want to talk about these topics, yes. By all means do, and we'll be very interested to answer your questions. So I have a question here. It says, like, how does the view for time blocking works? Um, I use org super agenda. So um, what happens is that my active timestamps are only in my Gmail org file. So if you use org gcal, you have to specify a certain org file. And when it you know, imports them, it imports them as like active timestamps. 
And I make sure whenever I create a to-do or even a research task that it doesn't have a timestamp on it because what I want to do is go back and then move around um, these tasks according to my, you know, either weekly schedule or monthly or however long you want to do it. Um, so yeah, only active timestamps or de deadlines um, appear in your time grid. So that could work. Um, yeah, that's very good. Uh, just to, just to uh, interject for a second about this, you know, with Orgrom right now, we have mostly uh, focused on optimization, but yeah. we're hoping to move on to UX fairly soon. So all those matters about, you know, having to do's in your files, it is something that we've been thinking about with Jethro Kwan, who is my main commentator for Orgrom, and we'll be working on this in the coming months. So don't worry too much about it and stay tuned. Yeah. Um, so I've got the eBib and what else? Um, what subjects? I think, okay. What is this question? Have you seen the project Pappies? I'm not sure. What, oh, it's a Zotero alternative. Okay, I'll look into it. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know about it either. So please yeah. look into it and let me know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, have, have we covered so, all the questions? I believe we have. And we have about two minute leeway for me to okay. move into the next talk. So we're right on time. All right, thank you so much. Really appreciate it and good luck everyone. Well, thank you and thank you so much for coming and uh, doing allowing me not to be the only one talking about all room today. Sounds good. All right. Thank you both thank you. very much. Yes.